Welcome back, eighth graders. So we're starting uh, linear inequalities. Um, and so these are going to be inequalities that are lines as opposed to, uh, or our boundaries are lines, as opposed to our boundaries being an open or closed dot, and then us drawing a line. So we're going to be uh, graphing lines and shading. Uh, so let's hop right on in. All right, so there's going to be times where, or I like to use checking a point uh, to see if it's part of the solution. Uh, this is what helps me know uh, which direction to shade. Um, so to start, is the ordered pair a solution of y is greater than x minus 3? So I know that this is x comma y as a point, so I'm going to plug... I know that x is 1 and y is 2. So I'm going to plug those into my inequality here. So 2 greater than 1 minus 3. So is 2 greater than negative 2? And the answer is yes. So it is a solution to the inequality. And that's, I mean, that's checking your solutions. Uh, I plug it in. I simplify where I can, and then I just answer to myself, yes or no, it is a solution. Or if it's asking for that in the homework, yes or no. All right, what is the graph of y is greater than x minus 2? So here's a few things, and I didn't put a slide just to talk about this stuff. When graphing, remember when we had greater than or less than, and we said that these were open circles, well, in, when we're graphing equations of lines or inequalities of line, linear inequalities, these will be open lines, which is pretty much dashed. But I like to use the word open because we think of it as an open circle uh, as opposed to a closed. Um, and so that's how I think of it. It's a dashed line. And then if we have the equal to where we used to fill in our circle and called it a closed circle, uh, we're going to draw a solid line. So the, the closed or solid line represents the fact that that is part of the solution and the dashed line means that this is my boundary but not part of the solution. So in looking, I know I'm going to be a dashed line. And I always have to like look. And for me, I kind of have to write it because otherwise I'm going to draw a sh solid line just out of habit. Other than that, it's just like before. I know what M and B is. B is going to be negative 2. M is 1 over 1 because it's 1. Uh, and so I'm going to begin at B, which would put me a point at negative 2. And then I'm going to go up 1 over 1 and up 1 over 1. And I'm going to continue that pattern. Uh, on these, I just tend to continue it all the way to our boundaries. And the opposite of up 1 and over 1 is down and left. And so now I'm going down and left. From here, I know that I need an open line or a dashed line. And so I'm just going to kind of draw some dashes through here. I could have kind of made my dots dashes as I went through. It's one way we could have done it. Um, either way, I now have a dashed line. Now, the next step is which direction do I uh, shade. And so you can either just talk to yourself and say, okay, well, I know it's greater than, so I've got to be above that line. Or if that, like, I struggle to visualize that. And so what I do is I plug in. My favorite point to plug in is zero comma zero because it's an easy point to plug in. And you can use that as long as it's not on your line. If it's on your line, you've got to choose a different point. So I'm going to plug in 0 
So is 0 greater than 0 minus 2? So is 0 greater than negative 2? The answer is yes. So here is my 0, 0. If I can find my dot, here's my 0, 0. That means that we are shading this side of the line. And so any point this side of the line is a solution to this equation. Whereas any point on the opposite side is not a solution to that equation. So, but like I said, if you know greater than means that it's on this side of the line, by all means use that. If you're someone who struggles with knowing that, pick a point not on the line. I tend to use zero, zero plug it in. If it's a solution, shade on that side. If it's not a solution, go to the other side of the line and shade. All right. I don't know why I have an empty one there, but evidently I did. Moving on, what is the graph of each of these inequalities? Um, here we have x is greater than negative 1. So this is one of our special lines. It's our vertical line, so I go where x is negative 1. It is just greater than, so it is going to be a dashed line. So I'm going to make a vertical dashed line. Why? How do I know that it's vertical? Uh, because I know that if this was an x equals, it would be a vertical line. Um, because x is always negative 1, and this is the only way where x can always be negative 1. Greater than, when it comes to these, I don't plug anything in. Because I know that greater than, I'm just going to look, where are my x values that are greater than, well, they're on this side. These are the values greater than negative 1, and so that's where I shade. All right, here's my y is uh, greater than or equal to 2. It has the equal, so that means solid. I'm going to make it a solid line. Uh, I'm going to go where y is 2, so here's where y is 2, and I'm going to do my best to draw probably one of my better lines ever. Uh, draw a line. I know I need to be greater than, so greater than would put me here. If it said y is less than or equal to, then I'd shade on the other side, which are numbers less than. Um, so it really is that simple. Uh, I am going, the video is getting kind of long, so I am going to stop here. I'll make a second video where we're going to go over a word problem and uh, we're going to discuss, given a graph, how do you write the or the inequality of that graph. So I'll see you on the other side. Keep being you.